I do love some good vibes. <laughs> so we're going to try this one. I've been playing around with Numa Playout for uh, over a week now, and I'm finding it super cool. So what I thought I would do is dive in to some of the features of Numa Player, and we'll do that by creating a little song. Now, I've already queued up Numa Player here, but I'm going to delete it. Yeah, we're going to start from scratch. So to activate this, we need to firstly go to the external option. So we're going to scroll across until we hit external. We're going to hit audio unit extensions. Now, first of all, you need to go away and download it from the app store, link in the description, and then you're going to tap on Numa player here. It is going to load up and... So by default, you'll come in here, it'll be the Model D uh, piano, acoustic piano that you have there. And on the iPad here, look, the screen is a little bit harder to use than it is, say, on your... um on your Mac, but there are ways you can you can drop the keyboard away like that if you, you're finding that you can't actually see what you're doing here because you don't actually need the keyboard. Whoop, don't need the keyboard there if you're, for instance, using a MIDI keyboard, which is what I'm using here today. So obviously, if you're using the, the touchscreen keyboard, you'd leave it on there because... Uh, that touchscreen down there is not going to be big enough for you to do your keying. Uh, but yeah, it, for this demo, we're going to put that out of the way just so that you can see the interface in all its glory. And you can do that with any, any of these plugins. If you're using external MIDI, you can uh, put it away like that. So what we're going to do here, let's let's just record in, in its absolute default. So it comes in here, it sets this acoustic piano. We can turn on and off other instruments if we want to here. And see these little bars? I didn't notice this at first, but you can see which ones, which channel is using by these bars at the bottom here. And the more bars you get, the more sounds you're using. So let's just record in. Uh, we've just got 16 tracks here. I'm just going to do... Uh, I'm just going to do uh, eight, eight tracks, uh, eight uh, bars of this one. So, oh, by the way, check this out. I'm using a uh, sustain pedal. When I kick... When I put the sustain pedal in, pedal noise. How cool is that? Actually, that, I mean, that's attention to detail that you don't get. You get in like paid apps like Ravenscroft, but you don't get that sort of attention to detail in a free app. So let's record in a piano part and then we'll build out a little eight bar loop with this. Two, three, four. We only did four bars. That's okay. I think this will this will give us an idea here. We don't need to. What, once you see how it works, you'll be able to know how you can expand upon that. So, plus we could also just loop it if we wanted to. So now we've got this one track here. I was a little bit early on that, but here's the cool thing. Because like, did you hear there? I did it on purpose. Let's just say I did it on purpose. Here, how it's a little bit early on that one. Well, because this is a virtual instrument, we can actually come into our track settings and turn on some quantization. So this is kind of, it's a bit of a swing rhythm, but it's a light swing. So I'd probably use the 1 16th light swing here, and this should adjust to tidy this up a bit. No, it doesn't. Maybe it's a 1 8th swing that we need here. No, it's not working for us. Maybe it's the triplet that we actually need. And yeah, there's a bit of trial and error here for cheating. That's better. Uh, actually, yeah, if, if, I, if I knew my music theory better, I would have known that because it's a one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Yeah, so it is a triplet rhythm. Ding, 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 a ding, a ding. So I should have known that earlier. But there you go. That helps you clean things up. Nice, we've got our nice rhythm there. So we can add another track. Now, there's two ways to add your second track when you're using something like this. You can go through the pains of pressing it there and going audio unit extension and going Numa player and being back here, and that will take you back to the same default. Or the, the way that I like to do this, if I'm using the same instrument plugin a bunch of times, we'll just delete that, I like to duplicate. So I'm just going to tap on this one and duplicate it. And then that brings the exact same settings as this one. So if you've tweaked it already, you've now got... The, uh, the first track here, sounding like that. And then when we go to the second track and tap there and tap there, it's going to sound exactly the same. Very cool. So uh, let's let's uh, dial in a different sound, shall we, for our next one. Uh, does it work with AUM? Good question. 
someone else will hopefully answer that. I would imagine so because it's just an AUV3 plugin. So uh, it'll work with anything that supports AUV3 audio unit version 3. So this time we're going to select a different sound. Let's go with an electric piano. So here we've got, oh by the way, to, to change here, we'll, we'll select that one and we're just selecting this one here. Now this is your volume control for each one which is more relevant when we start mixing things in. And then when you've selected what you want there, you can hit this drop down here and change it up. So I'm thinking something like a whirly, something a bit like. I think that sort of, sort of sound. So we'll go with this whirly and we'll record again. We're gonna layer this up, so hit record. Record that over. We have confirmation from uh, Leela. Yes, Numa AUM, thumbs up. All right, so we've got our two tracks now. There is uh, our piano and our whirly. <laughs> Already sounding really good. We'll turn off the metronome uh, there because we've kind of got our groove going on here. Uh, let's hit the uh, plus button. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do the trick again. We'll tap it, we'll duplicate it and we'll grab it here. Let's get a bit fancy and schmancy, shall we? There's a couple of things we can do to get fancy here. One is to use our presets. Now, I know many people say, presets, you gotta do it all yourself. But presets help you learn how to use an app. In my opinion, if you're using a plugin for the first time, see what the presets do, and you can uh, you can jump in there. So here's the presets up on this bit where it's got this initial one. We tap that down, and here you go. Here's all the different programs that we have here. And there's some fun stuff in here. I really love this Pop Mix 80s, because this kind of shows what this thing can do. You can see here with this one, we've got the piano, we've got the Model F piano, and we've got strings and pads this synth pad 2 so we could change these up if you want to but these are the default ones that it's putting on these two here uh, the other thing that we've got is we've got the ability to change all of our settings here so you can see that you can play around with these these are more for, for folks that are using MIDI stuff they're going to go sort of next level but some that I do like is that you can quickly change the octave Handy if you've got a controller that needs that. And here you've got auto transpose. So if instead of playing in C major, I wanted to play in C sharp major, but still actually just hit a C, I can do that. I love plugins that do that because it gives you a little bit of a head start. We've got effects here. Now, these are pretty cool. By default, you'll normally just sort of have like a three band EQ with your bass, your mids and your trebles, and you probably know what they do. Want to add some more bass to that piano? We can do that. If we want to turn it on to the strings and pads, we just hit the enable button here and say we want a little more treble on our strings. Opens up those synth strings a bit with a bit more bass, a bit more treble. We've also got this over here we can enable and this is our second effect, which is a flanger. And turn it off there. But over here on the right, look at all this. You got all this business. You can actually change it up. So if instead we wanted the tremolo on those keys instead of the flanger, we can change it up, enable it. All right, let's, uh, let's record in a part. I like the sound of that. So let's hit, uh, hit the record. We'll start this one on G. One, two, three. <laughs> that nice synth pad sound. Very cool. Now we need uh, we need something a bit sort of trebly and jangly to kind of drive the lead of this little piece that we're putting together here. So again, we'll hit it, we'll duplicate it, and uh, this time we're going to go in and manually do some of this stuff. So we haven't used, what haven't we used? We haven't used the keys here much. So we'll go to our keys, and uh, why don't we go to the marimba? All right, now this one seems to have a bit of a built-in, uh, is this got the ping pong delay on there? 
Uh, maybe that's, no, it's, it's just part of that marimba. Or maybe it might be in our master. Yeah, there you go. It's our master delay. So the other thing I wanted to show you here is that as well as your individual effects, you've also got your master channel over here. So you can see we've, all, we've got delay and reverb on here, and we've got our master there. So uh, we can put the EQ and a compressor on here. which will just give you some compression on that. And if you want to learn more about compression, plenty of videos here on the channel. If we don't like that delay, or if we want just a little bit of that delay, and here's the cool thing, we can actually tell it which of these we want it on. So if we want a heap of it on this third zone, we can do that or turn it off. So there's, it's simple, but under the hood, there's ultimate control here in Numa Player to really get your sound sounding the way they want. Now, I do want that delay on, and I want just a little bit of it. I'm going to do a little uh, sort of arpeggiated bit here if I can actually coordinate it. <laughs> yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't go well. I think I think it's too much going on there. See. All right, we're just going to do something a bit simpler here. So we'll hit record. All right, that's not bad. Not really digging that sound though. So we're gonna go in here and change the sound. We're gonna go away from the marimba. And what about some vibes? I do love some good vibes. <laughs> so we're gonna try this one. And here's the cool thing, because you've got volume control right here in the app, we can just change things up there right in the app. Very cool. And you've, you've also got, uh, obviously, your effects down here. So this is like a shortcut to the effects that we have over here that we can play around with, which is pretty darn cool. You can see how much you're mixing in of these. Let's add some stereo chorus to that. That might be cool. All right, let's, uh, let's add another one. This time we'll go back in here via the instruments this way, Numa Player. And uh, why don't we go, let's find something really wacky. Let's go to our, uh, up here, to our plugins, and let's find something bizarre. Uh, I think there was, was it, this one here, Clock and Strings. Let's see what Clock and Strings is all about. So this one is uh, our Celesta and our Strings Ensemble together, and it sounds like this. Let's try it. Let's try something a little bit like this. Two, three, four. Pretty cool. Uh, all right, we do, we do need we do need that final like instrument. So let, let's find like a string instrument to make this uh, to do like a really nice uh, high melody part to to complement this one. So well, this time we'll go in here and we'll dial in strings ourselves. So we'll go to the strings here, and what about a what about a cello? Hmm, I haven't tried the cello yet. All right, let's see. Oh, what have I done wrong? <laughs> I broke him. Um, I have done something incorrect here because we have lost. We have lost the sound. Did I not turn it on? I didn't turn it on. There you go. There's a trap for you. If you got nothing on, if none of this stuff is on, it's not going to do it. All right, that's not bad. But the attack's a bit slow on this. I need a faster attack. All right, we're, we're going to use this more as a um, as a pad here. All right, 
Uh, so that blended in a little bit more than I wanted it to. Boop. And we'll open it up here. Uh, but that by itself <coughs> sounds like this. Cool. So we uh, we've probably overdone this, but I wanted to I wanted to show you just the the complexity of this. Oh, look, we got one. We got one. It quit. We're gonna reload it. Let's see if it's actually still working. Because sometimes. Ah, there you go. We pushed it. We've got six of them there, and we got the uh, the plug in quit reload option. And sometimes, even when you reload it, it doesn't work. Now it's probably reminding me that we need to um we need to jump out of that one, and jump back in, and usually just closing and reopening fixes it. Sometimes it does it. Oh, this is this is actually not bad. I don't mind when this happens live because it shows what can happen. Yeah, there it is. It's a spinning thing. So what we'll try to do, what we'll usually do is close out boop, boop, and jump back in. So it's, it's good to know. It's good to know the limitations of something like this. Because again, we're pushing this pretty hard. On some of those tracks, we've got like two different samples that we're using and uh, it's still playing. <laughs> It did. It got performance anxiety. <laughs> so many people watching it. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing. It is It is going to be heavy on the resources. I mean, I'm running the iPad Pro 2020 here, uh, which has plenty of overhead. I think if you're on an M1, you'd probably be able to have plenty more without problems. If you were running a uh, an older or a less capable iPad, yeah, might not be uh, might not be as good. There's one final preset here that I love that I want to find a use for. And uh, I, it was the Christmas choir. Where was it? Uh, the She's Lovely is pretty cool, but there was the, here it is, the Xmas Choir. Let's uh, take a listen to this Xmas Choir. <laughs> Who would have thunk it you'd get Christmas carols in, uh, in, what are we, April? Are we in April? March. <laughs> I got a bit excited. All right, let's, uh, let's just do one more track here. I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to make something up really random and weird here. Two, three. <laughs> Why? Because fun. There you go. Uh, so that is pretty much going to do it. And of course, we can start mixing this and uh, and panning it and doing all those sorts of things. And the other cool thing is because these are all MIDI, again, we can change them to our heart's content. You can come in here. Oh, didn't mean to split. We meant to edit. Undo. Redo the recording. All right. We can come in here and you can actually edit your MIDI notes. You saw earlier how we can go in there and transpose the MIDI notes. There's a whole lot that you can do in here. And we've probably, this is a deep dive, but it's probably still only about 50% of the power of this thing. Free uh, is a bit resource heavy, as you saw there, because it had a little crash there. But I don't think you can argue about this in terms of how cool it sounds and uh, how useful it's going to be in your GarageBand projects. <laughs>